Now up with Cole Hauser. He plays John Wright in the new wrestling movie, The Last Champion. And, and Cole, first of all, it's been a while since we last chatted at the premiere when we got this thing finally done. Now it's gone from that preview to now we're going to see it December 8th. How excited are you for this project to finally, finally get some fresh air out, out in the world of the film world? I can't wait. You know, I just think this is a perfect film right now for all the communities in our country. You know, an uplifting piece about uh, somebody who's struggling, who who's dealing with addiction, who's dealing with, you know, um, just being a shattered kind of soul and his journey back to redemption. When we look at the the foundation of the movie, you know, it, working with Glenn Halley and Ivy with their script and their production, this has been in the process for, for quite a while. Talk about the, the origin story of how this kind of landed on your desk and how you figured that the role for John Wright was right for you. So I was actually traveling from Vancouver, uh, Canada, after doing four years on a show called Rogue. And my agent slipped me the script um, before I got on the plane and said, hey, listen, read this. You know, this is amazing. Uh, and I was in no mood to be reading anything. I was exhausted. But I got on the plane, I read it, and I just kept turning the page and going, holy smokes, man, this is just unbelievable. Um, so when I landed in Los Angeles, I actually called my agent and said, Jim, set up a median, like meeting today. I want to meet him. Um, and I ended up going from the airport to meet Glenn and Ivy and, and Hallie and, and had a great meeting and the rest is history. Yeah, with the history. So what year was that? Because this project has been in the works for years. God, I think it's two, is it three years ago now? I think it's three years. Yeah. Now, when the, the concept comes out there, wrestling is the backdrop. Glenn Withrow was a wrestler, I, you know, and, and Ivy, who co-wrote it, uh, you know, obviously dad's a wrestler. So, you know, daughter knows about wrestling. What was your background in the sport of wrestling before even jumping into this? Non-existent. I mean, I had a buddy of mine who I grew up with who was a great wrestler. But, you know, I played football, soccer, basketball. I was just never a sport that was really around um, for me. But uh, I got to say, you know, when you look at like, what Sean did and what Scott did, you know, in that final sequence, you know, I mean, you got to be in shape and um, they did a fantastic job. I mean, you were there and saw it. I mean, they must have done 10, 12 takes of that, you know, um, and then, you know, being able to pick the mind of, of some of the guys out of Idaho and, and, uh, and Pullman, you know, as far as coaching is concerned, I mean, that was, uh, you know, it was obviously a joy to get some real understanding of what, what it takes to be a coach, you know, and, and the different styles of coaches too. When you prepare for a role, something that's rooted in, in, a, in sport, uh, there's, there's, you know, movies that come out that they might miss the mark on, Oh, well, that's not right. Well, that's not even, even, you know, I icon the iconic vision quest. There's a sequence in the scoring where wrestling purists are like, well, he got the take. Uh, there was no takedown. How does he, you know, you get into the nuance of it. How much of the nuance of wrestling did you try to understand and learn to put into this role? I mean, just honestly understanding how a match works, you know, um, I, again, I'd never had been to a match. I've never, you know, and being able to have, you know, Dan Gable there, you guys like that, that, you know, I could just kind of, you know, bend their ear and ask them little questions just to give me little nuances. You said to, to be able to look like I know what I'm doing and also coaching, you know, where to stand, you know, um, what to say during the actual match itself. Um, we're all little things that, that I certainly learned along the way. Before we get to the, the final sequence, which is where I was on set in Texas, and I got to see some of that, but what I didn't see was everything that led up to it. And uh, you understand that there were some weather challenges in, in that part of the country, and, and that made some, some real interesting shooting environments. What were some of the more uh, challenging things as an actor to deal with on location in eastern Washington and, and Idaho? Uh, I mean, the cold. I mean, uh, you talk about I mean, it was, I think it was minus 22 degrees one night. I mean, that's, that's about as cold as I've ever been in. I mean, you know, when your face starts to feel like it's falling off because it's burning, that's usually frostbite setting in. So <laughs> um, we had one of those nights actually where it was very rare that we did a night shoot, but it was the scene where Michael gets jumped and, uh, and man, him hitting the, the ground. I mean, it was just frozen tundra, as you can imagine. And being out there was just... It was miserable, but ultimately it looks great on the film and that's all that matters. Well, I live in Minnesota. So when we see 22 below, uh, we call that Thursday. <laughs> 
That's when you put on your Speedo and you go out and sunbathe? <laughs> not at all. Plus, we're not talking about me and a Speedo. We're never mentioning that in the same sentence again. Now, when we, we talk about the roles and the the role of an actor, I mean, you've you've been in the business. I mean, it's it's in your it's in your pedigree. You you've been around the film industry your entire life. So when you get a role like this that's that's different, all the while you've got a show right now that is for all intents and purposes just booming with Yellowstone. Full admission, it's on my binge list. Haven't gotten to it yet, but it is on my binge list. But, uh, you know, compare the two situations and, and why The Last Champion coming out right now is really going to benefit from maybe the, the success of Yellowstone. Well, anything that that happens right now um, when it comes to Yellowstone, so, I mean, it's its its own beast. I mean, it's, it's killing it. So, um, I mean, the, the people have spoken when it comes to that. Um, this, this movie, I mean... I think with Glenn and I, it, you know, we were always trying to figure out when is the best time to bring it out, you know, and and I always felt like this has a great chance to be something special during the holidays, you know, um, that's when everybody's sitting around. Nobody's going to theaters anymore, as you know, that's everything's being streamed. Um, and I think the message is a good one, you know, for the holidays. So um, I'm excited, you know, the, the next month and a half, I mean, we're going to find out, you know, just how many people care about wrestling, number one, but also care about watching somebody, you know, rise from the ashes of, of life and, 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 you know, really do something special uh, and take this young man and, and teach him not only wrestling, but, but life. Well, let's, let's go with you in that regard. Put yourself in that situation, teaching you wrestling to play this role, you know, as, as it works on your life. What did you learn from the sport in your time trying to learn it? I mean, that, you know, you got to be tough as nails. That's one, two, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a full-time job. I mean, it, there's no, you know, taking days off to be great. You know, as a wrestler, you need to dedicate yourself to the sport. Um, also, you know, I think it, 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 what's surprising to me is you think it's, it's just about strength and about power and about explosiveness, but it's a real mental game too, you know? Um, and that, that I always love when, when you look at, athletics is that there's that aspect to it when you look at the wrestling scenes you alluded to this with 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 sean and casey and what they had to do and the choreography that that, that joel Shearer and paul bradley who will actually i'll talk to them later about this project but uh, to see you know paul bradley's division one all-american joel russell division three to see them choreograph those scenes for that final scene no spoilers not giving it away right now but what was it like to see you know the wrestlers actually put something together to train the actors on how to do the wrestling moves and you know look at it in a, in a believable fashion well you know i wasn't a part of them doing the rehearsal stuff so i i got to you know come in at the last minute like you and go okay well what are they doing you know and how is it going to look and and then when you start to watch the you know rehearsal process you know then you start laying in the where they are on the mat and so on so that was all something that when we got to texas um you know, the, the day started, what the hell am I saying to at the very end, you know, knowing exactly what moves they were doing, when the breaks were, what I would be saying in those breaks and so on. So when it comes to the filmmaking process, this was a real eye opener, you know, being able to see just one day, one day on a set, one and a half days, uh, at least for, for my involvement in the see, I think there was a shot in the final scene that I think we did it 18 or 19 times. And in your career, is that the norm? Is that something that an actor has to be mentally ready for. I mean, it's repetition. Wrestling is repetition, drilling the same move over and over and over. Do you get it right? Explain like that sequence. And in, in sometimes in your career where you've had to hit the same thing over and over and over and just to fine tune it perfectly. So it hits up on that screen. Just right. It's been a while since I've done 18 texts that, that doesn't exist anymore in my world, but um, I, I did do a movie years and years ago uh, called high low country. And I think I had like, 15 different marks to hit. Um, it was a Stephen Fierce film. And, you know, I was only 21 years old at the time. And, I, you know, I was good at hitting marks, but this was like. When you um, say Mark, what do you mean by that? For those are, I don't know what you mean. So I just explained it a little bit. Marks that, that they put on the floor and, you know, you'll walk up and have a scene and you have to hit that mark for focus. And then you have to go over and hit another market, a mark to, to have that, you know, conversation with this other actor. And there was 15 different marks all over the room. It was a ballroom. And Stephen Fears has a camera, and it's in one shot of me having to hit all these marks. And it took a day and a half to do the scene. Um, it was that technical. 
Um, so that's probably the last time that I remember doing anything more than, you know, 10 times. And when you look at wrestling, because it's kind of hard to have the exact same movement in, in a live wrestling match and try to replicate it. So uh, when, when you saw the, the final finished form, what were your thoughts of that final sequence with the with the, you know, the ultimate climax of the movie? I mean, I I sat back in awe. I mean, I was like, wow. I mean, this is this is about as good as, you know, for a novice, you know, guy who watched wrestling. I thought, shit, these kids did great. <laughs> I mean, uh. I know they wrestled some in high school, but I mean, they, they danced great together. You know, they beat each other up perfectly. And, and I feel like, uh, you know, for a wrestling film, you'd know better, but, but I have a feeling that because of Glenn and because of, you know, the people that were involved that this is going to be one of the better wrestling films that's been seen in, 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 in years, at least. Well, if you are a reader, I would recommend the book Vision Quest by Terry Davis. It's uh, it's what the movie is based on, but that's definitely a good read. Now, when we, we look at this movie and we go back to learning wrestling and, and take take me back to, 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 to Washington, Idaho, or even before then, the preparations like, OK, I've got to play a wrestler who was in the Olympics. I've you know, I've got this this pedigree behind me of, of Iowa and Coach Gable, who will make a, an appearance later in the film. How do you prepare? Where is the preparation begin? Who was your first call when it comes to learn wrestling? Um, actually, Chris Mattingly is from Spokane, um, who's a friend of mine. He actually was an Army Ranger, too. Um, but he wrestled in high school. And um, I talked to him about it, you know, and then and that was prior to meeting any of you guys, you know, and being able to talk with, with Dan on the phone. I talked to him once. So that was nice. Um but there was, I'm blanking his name, and maybe you'll remember, but he he was one of the he was one of the guys that helped with the choreography. He he was out of Idaho. I believe he was a coach there. Kind of reddish hair. Um, yeah, it was Joel Joel Shear, I just mentioned him. He was actually a grad student at Idaho, had wrestled it in division three. And in the, the story, I we're gonna get a deeper dive on that, but apparently he was an extra and said something about the quality of wrestling, and then Glenn heard it. Because apparently, as we learn, everything on a set is mic'd up. Everybody can hear everything. So uh, that's how that kind of started. I had no idea that he said something. And I thought he was uh, friends with, with Glenn. But but he was very helpful. He was he was somebody that I, I talked to a lot because he was around all the time, you know. Um, and then you guys came in for the last day, you know, to do your thing. So um, he was somebody that, that was very open and honest and wasn't, you know, didn't have an ego about stuff. You know, he was just like, hey, let me just shoot you straight. Like, this is what you should be doing. You know, and so he was great that way. When we look at who coached you to be a coach, is that also where you got that inspiration from? Yeah, you're, you know, on set with, with Joel and, and your friend Chris there? Yeah, no, coaching came from me. I mean, it's, I, I created that. That's not anybody I saw. I was just, you know, there's two kind of coaches in the world. There's ones that rip you down and, and then, you know, there's, there's ones that take you and, and somehow with positive reinforcement, they're tough but they're looking for you to grow and to, to be better, you know? Um, and that's the coach that I wanted to portray. I wanted to portray somebody that, you know, uh, cared and wanted to see the best out of the kid win or lose. You know what I mean? He just wanted him to have the right headspace. You know, you've been, you've been on the screen for, for quite a long time. I, I even joke with you on set about, uh, you know, the line from, from days to confusion. You're like, man, I did that movie 25 years ago. So uh, it's one of those things that, you know, you've been in some some big films, and of course, again, we we mentioned the role you've got uh, in Yellowstone. But when when you look back at your career, when do you think it really kind of hit that that tipping point? Be like, okay, you know, I've got small role, small role, small role, and then boom. And then you know, was was it on the timeline that you thought it would be? Um, you know, listen, this business is is interesting. I, I don't ever think that you hit anything. You know what I mean? This is this is a business where you have to recreate yourself each and every day. You know, I mean, even with Yellowstone, the success of it, each year you have to come back and you have to outdo yourself, you know, and make sure that the character is still interesting, that the story is good, that the relationships are there, you know, and it's something that you're constantly working at. You know, um, th there are moments here and there where you go, oh, well, that's a big break. Good. You know, I worked hard to get there, you know, but but, you know. I've always taken the stairs of life, man. I haven't taken any elevators, you know, and it's not going to stop. It's the way I like it. You know, it's, it's a lot easier when you get there. Um, if you've walked the stairs than it is the elevator. 
we'll, we'll start talking about the stairs. And, and part of that is, you know, you got 15 flights, you got 50 flights. Sometimes when you're shooting things simultaneously, which I understand doesn't happen very often, but when it does, uh, because we had to reshoot the final scene uh, of this movie. And, you know, by that time, I'm guessing you're already filming Yellowstone. What's that timeline like when these two things intersect? God, that's right. So I think I finished season one, shaved my face and flew down there and, and, because my hair's dyed for Yellowstone, I had to let it the dye come out of it, and then they would have to spray it in so that I could cut my hair to match the last champion uh, for the last sequence. And just for the, for the so people know, I mean, the reason why the last sequence was reshot was to make it bigger. You know, it, it, I guess when when Glenn did the initial um, you know wrestling match, it didn't seem big enough. There wasn't people in the audience or enough people, and we were in. Uh, this huge gymnasium where it just felt like, what is this little match that's happening in this huge gymnasium? So I'm glad he did it. I mean, he convinced the investors to to uh, pay for it, and they did. Thank God. When, when you look at this movie, obviously we, we hasn't been released until December 8th. Again, going uh, digital download or video, uh, video digital release on Apple. I've already pre-ordered it, obviously, uh, December 8th. When you look at just what it took to put this thing together, where do you think it ranks in terms of how fun it was to put together and, and how much you actually personally got out of it? I mean, I, I, it would take an hour to explain, you know, how, how much Glenn has done and along with Ivy and along with Hallie to get this thing to where it is to just today. So, I mean, they, they worked on the script for five years, I believe, and they filmed it for almost two years because we shot, we didn't, just reshoot the ending. We, we added stuff in the beginning of the film, like New Mexico, so that you can see the change of, of territory, meaning New Mexico and editing it and doing the music and the color timing and, you know, for almost a year and a half. So, I mean, this, this, this movie ranks with, you know, probably out of all the independent films, probably the longest that's been in the can, um, certainly the longest that's been in the can. Yeah, and from an actor's perspective, again, I, I, I had a little bit of an opportunity to see how the sausage is made, so to speak, and, and going into things like ADR and, and such like that, re, redoing the audio of lines and such. And when when you put this together as an actor, I mean, what's the timeline, a process of a typical movie for you? I was like, okay, you go and you shoot a couple scenes, or if you're the lead, obviously the time differs there. But the, the behind the scenes, not just, okay, shoot the film, we're done. There's the stuff that you could come back and do. Explain what that process is like for some folks in some films. Well, in this one, you know, I was a part of a lot of the talks when it came to reshooting or adding um, ideas that I had, ideas that Glenn had. Um, and we were we're constant communication, the two of us, especially on this film. So um, and we still do. I mean, it, all the way up until he locked the movie a couple months ago, you know, we were talking. So um, he's one of those really, you know, great kind of creative collaborators that, that not only you know, I like to have, especially when you're doing something like this, that means so much to both of us. Um, but it's it's rare that you find somebody that that you really get along with and, and, you know, enjoy not only working with, but also being able to talk and come up with stuff. So um, it's it's been an amazing process. You know, I, I think everything's about timing, you know, and, and this is a great time for this film to come out, not just because of the holidays, but because of the message. The message, the holidays, and, and ultimately, when when a film doesn't get a theatrical release for one reason or another, um, you know, sometimes people take it, you know, take it differently. We're in different times right now, so it's not a negative that this thing is going straight to digital. And and in some cases, uh, we've seen with the success of some Disney Plus offerings. I know I'm sitting there renting some of these movies, and I'm looking, go, why can't I just download it? And it's like movie night with the kids. So uh, we're going to have that opportunity. We're going to try to have a watch party as many as, as many people we're allowed to have here up in Minnesota, but, uh, you know, what, what's, what's a personal debut like for you? I mean, we go, we, we can go to the theater and see it or a premiere at Warner brothers, but when a film comes out and you get an opportunity to sit back and watch it, what, what's your process? You know, I don't watch everything. Like I don't watch Yellowstone. So I, I, I'm not somebody that, um, loves to see what I've done. So I, I kind of, I do it and I move on this picture I've seen twice, which is kind of new for me, but, I think Glenn and I wanted to discuss, you know, different moments, you know, about the edit and, and making sure that that everything was there that 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 I did on the day. Um, but 
you know, my son, my oldest boy, he's 16. He, he came to the, the premiere and he loves it. So I know that he's going to want to see it again. We'll be watching it again. My, my middle boy will watch it, my daughter. And then uh, we're going to be with my wife's family down in Florida. So they'll all see it too. And I know they're excited. You going to get any of those kids on the wrestling mat? Any of them interested in actually wrestling, putting on the shoes? <laughs> my, maybe my daughter. <laughs> but my 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 two boys, I mean, they're like offensive linemen. They're 6'4 and 240, and, you know, they love football. So, um, well, I'm happy. We, <laughs> we, wrestling makes you a better football player. That's been proven. Like, Stephen Neal never played a down of college football, and he won a couple rings with the Patriots. So, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. And women's wrestling is an Olympic sport. So, you've got that, too. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Now, as as we look at the sport of wrestling and, and, and bringing it back. It's something that we've been, you know, we've seen wrestling movies and sometimes that they, they have the best of intentions and, and sometimes they fall flat and I've seen them all. And there's yeah. some that I like better than, than others. And when I, when I look at this one, this one has the, the opportunity to be a, a transcendent film for our sport. When you look at a film, like let's look at days to confuse. Let's, let's go way back in time. I was in the eighth grade. Let's just put the dime on it. That 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 movie just basically just it's it's a cult classic. It's not it's more than just that. Uh, you know, people will quote that thing to this day. All right, all right, all right. I mean, we, we see that constantly. What do you hope this film has with some staying power, maybe 20 years from now when we talk about it? Oh, that's a great question. I, I, I think, you know, look, wrestling is a big part of this movie, but it's it's I think the bigger part of this film is humanity. And I think it's family. I think it's love. I think it's faith. I think it's addiction. I think it's, you know, being a teacher, uh, redemption. Um, I mean, those are the words that I think of when I, uh, you know, wrestling is, again, it's, it's the last 20 minutes of the film. But if you look at the film itself, it's, it's really about somebody's growth, you know, and being this kind of shattered soul who finds his way back to being able to even, take a kid like Sean and be able to teach him not only physically, but mentally how to be the best you. And I think that that has the wrestling backdrop to it. Um, but it, it ultimately isn't a story about wrestling. It's a story about, about John Wright and his growth as, you know, a guy who was, um, you know, disgraced, disgraced his country as a wrestler, disgraced his community and, uh, and forgiveness. Again, not trying to spoil it, but there's a scene at the end of the movie that, um, you know, the, the backstory was you wrestled at Iowa. And then there's Dan Gable, who at the, in the era would have been coaching. What was it like to sit there and film a scene with Dan Gable, knowing that, okay, this is the guy that I'm supposed to have wrestled for, and all of a sudden he is, he is there at the end of the movie? You know, it's, it's kind of cool because, I mean, you, you hear so much about Dan, you know, and, and you, you know, I was able to see some stuff online about him, you know, and his different um, – his different students that he had throughout his career talking about him. But yeah, to look across and think, wow, um, probably one of the most legendary, if not the most legendary uh, wrestling coach in the history of, of wrestling. Um, and that I, you know, as, as the character, you know, rolled around for him, uh, was pretty, pretty sweet moment. Randy Lewis right there too. I mean, you had two Olympic champs on set at, at, for that final sequence. So, I mean, it's not like, I mean, you're, you're a star, they're stars in our sport. You know, you look at the various niches and what's it like when you meet somebody that's a crossover, you know, in the enigmatic type of person uh, within their niche that you may not be familiar with. I mean, th there's gotta be those situations in, in all walks of, of your career, but in, in, in the angle of this movie, I mean, what's it like meeting Randy Lewis and Dan Gable? I mean, I was, you know, I didn't have a ton of time, unfortunately. I mean, we were all running and gunning, trying to finish, the movie, but, uh, you know, just to have a few minutes to talk to them about wrestling and, you know, and, and to be able to pick their mind about, you know, me coaching and what I should be saying or doing, you know, was an honor. Um, those guys are, you know, they're legends of their own sport. And I've had the great opportunity to meet a bunch of them and, you know, in football and, and now wrestling. And, and it's just, uh, it's, it's pretty cool to, to do what I do and be able to have that ability to, to be able to shake hands with people that have really, you know, changed the sport. Yeah. I think, I think you had 18 or 19 handshakes with Gable. We will, we'll talk to Glenn more about that uh, yeah. la later on here on, on short time. And in the time we got left looking at the initial blast from, from the last champion on social, what have you been most impressed with, with the response 
uh, maybe it'd be from the wrestling community, maybe from your, your own community within the, uh, the acting world. I think people are ready for a film that, that, that tackles these subject matters. I think that they're like excited about it, you know? Um, there they yeah. are now. Yeah. They're excited. excited. They want to get the, they want to get Cole uh, right now. Hey, Cole, tell me about this. <laughs> um, they, uh, from the comments I've read, you know, from the post, me putting the trailer on, on Instagram, I mean, people are, are overly excited and it's not like, Oh, well, you know, we'll go watch it because Cole's on Yellowstone. They actually love the fact I mean, there's tons of people that are commenting about the wrestling aspect of it and that their kids are wrestlers in high school. You know, um, there's tons of people, you know, commenting on, you know, the redemption part of it. And, you know, we use the slogan, you know, for the film, which is heart has no rival and people love that, you know, so it's um, it's exciting to, to think about, you know, in what, two weeks, you know, we'll, we'll have some understanding of, you know, what people really think of this movie. And it's been a long time coming and I'm excited. One thing that I love that at, at the end of this, uh, we part of the intro redone. I mean, who, who'd have thought you'd have been on the cover of amateur wrestling news in a movie. And that's, uh, that's one of the cooler things that I saw from the, from the opening sequence, you could see it in the trailer, but uh, one of those cool little add-ons that were, was not an initially done part of that editing process. It's like, that just works. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. I like it. <laughs> All right, folks, if if, uh, if people are interested in keeping up with Cole Hauser, if, if, if they're not following you back since 93 or Too Fast, Too Furious or whatnot, where can they find you on social media and how can they find more about your role in this movie? I'm Instagram. I'm Cole Hauser 22 official. So I'd like to thank Cole Hauser for your time. I'm going to wrap up here now. But, uh, again, it was a pleasure getting to, to work with you on this film again. Like you said, we were running and gunning there at the end. So uh, not a whole lot of time talking about. But, uh, you know, like I said, if I throw out a – a line from the movie from 1993. I, you're gonna you're gonna give it back to me. So I enjoyed that. So I enjoyed the time we had, and I enjoyed being part of the project. Not you know not just doing this interview because I was part of it, but I'm just happy for the project to be done. Glenn and Ivy and, and Hallie all reached out, and uh, you guys are more than gracious. So I'm I'm excited to to show it to my family again. Yeah, you haven't seen the film, right? Well, I saw it at the premiere. Okay, all right. But this is it's changed some, so it'll be a new experience for you and your family. So let me know what you think. I will be sure to do that. So. Cole, appreciate the time. Got it, my man. Take care. Happy holidays.